Welcome to another episode of Meet Your uh, Neighborhood Officers. I'm Officer Farzad Gotbi and this is my partner uh, Mer Chabiga. Um, today we have a special episode uh, um, being that uh, we're going to have our uh, superintendent, our boss, uh, Tony Rivier. Um, we are very uh, honored and privileged to have him here to uh, have him speak about uh, himself and his uh, personal experience in policing um, and as, as well as speaking about uh, uh, neighborhood policing here in 51 division. Thank you, Superintendent uh, Tony Revere, for uh, being with us. Uh, we're again, we're very honored that you're here. I know you're a very busy man, and um, and uh, we've done already a few episodes already, as you know. And uh, we just wanted to uh, welcome you and uh, and have you introduced to the uh, Regent Park community. Um, and uh, maybe if you can uh, speak about your uh, experience in uh, your policing, where you came in, uh, and and uh, now that you're here in 51 Division with us, where do you see uh, this neighborhood policing go and what do you think of it as well? Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me here. Um, it's a wonderful opportunity to get out. Anytime I get the opportunity to outreach and reach out to the larger segment of uh, any community, it's always a welcome opportunity. Um, so a little bit about me. I, uh, I joined this, this job uh, as a result of wanting to make a difference. Um, and so I felt that, uh, you know, there was, there were certain things that caught my attraction within uh, the policing. Uh, a lot of it actually was, was negative. Uh, and I felt that uh, one way of making a, an impactful difference is by being part of the outfit and, and contributing from within as opposed to being outside uh, and, and, and making my comments known. And so I joined this organization some years and years ago. Uh, 51 Division represents my third command as the unit commander. I had previous uh, commands in 31 Division in the Jane and Finch area. I was also the unit commander of 33 Division, which is up at the York Mills and, uh, and Don Mills area. But one of the essentials in all my commands is the recognition of the importance in developing relationships with the community we serve. I, and there was no better way of doing that by having a neighborhood officer program. See, uh, traditionally in policing, we thought we had all the answers. And we will tell you what the questions are. And, and uh, quite frankly, all our responses were always enforcement-centric. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll analyze data and we'll, we'll come up with, a, with a, 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 a problem. And our reaction was typically enforcement. We didn't take, quite frankly, we didn't take the opportunity to speak with our residents, uh, to hear what their perspective of the problems are, and more importantly, to hear what their solutions are. And so one of the things, the great benefits in Neighborhood Officer Program is it provides us an opportunity to get to know the people that we serve and get to hear from their perspective what local issues they see of concern and most importantly, to work with them to come up with sustainable solutions. And so we have neighborhood officers that are embedded in a geographic area with the specific intent into taking some ownership of that geographic area, getting to know the people that reside in that neighborhood, getting to know the problems, getting to work and develop partnerships with those local entities in order to, uh, to identify a, a, a particular uh, solution that may be that may be a response to uh, to a local problem, but do it in a joint manner. And so uh, we have uh, the program in Regent Park where we have four great officers who are assigned uh, to that area, and these two officers are a true reflections of that. Uh, they have been able over time to develop relationships, uh, and uh, and they are in a position now where we are seeing the fruits of their labor where people uh, have actually uh, recognized the value that they have brought and in turn have provided value to us, all in the effort of creating a sustainable, vibrant neighborhood. 
Thank you very much. And we couldn't agree with you more. And um, one thing we uh, already talked about uh, is, is uh, making that connection with the community, which is the most important thing that we do here as neighborhood officers. Uh, where do you see, uh, uh, specifically uh, Region Park and also citywide, where do you see this uh, neighborhood policing go? Because one thing that we get from our uh, community members and stakeholders is that, uh, is this something that is just the flavor of the day or the week? Or are we looking at this something that's going to be, uh, be in the future? And how are the uh, officers are being sort of uh, um, implanted in the neighborhood? Are there going to be... Uh, many changes because uh, historically, uh, you know, we've had obviously we had some changes and we didn't have that sustainability that we always wanted and wanted to achieve. And um, just in regards to that, what you can uh, maybe speak about and say, yeah. where do you see it going from yeah. here? So, so we we have to we have to first to remain relevant as a service. We have to recognize that in fact the environment has changed, and the whole concept of reactive policing is something of the past. And so how do we engage in proactive policing? How do we engage in predictive uh, policing? As they often say, if you can predict, then you can prevent. And uh, one of the, the, the main driving forces that we see is the neighborhood uh, officer program. And so to answer your first question, I see that as being the future. I see uh, the neighborhood officer program as, as being the way to reach out to a larger segment of, uh, of society, particularly our youth. We can't minimize the importance of our youth. They have a voice, but in the past it's been challenged, we've been extremely challenged in getting that voice to the table and, and listening to these individuals. But with the opportunity to have neighborhood policing program, we have a, 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 the occasion for officers to and get involved in programs that speak specifically to our youth. And it provides an opportunity for our youth then to see police officers in a different capacity to build bonds with, with these officers. And in turn, we, uh, we were hoping to yield the benefits of these youth being able to dialogue with our officers and to get their perspective as we develop strategies jointly and to respond to some of the uh, community uh, uh, issues and, and challenges. Um, the, the issue about longevity, if you like, with neighborhood officers being assigned to a program, that's, we, we get that. We get that there is, it takes time uh, of to build trust. You don't just, be, by virtue of being identified as a neighborhood officer for an area, all of a sudden get into that area and, and overnight get that trust. You have to earn that trust, and that is time consuming. And so we, we, we expect that officers who have been selected for neighborhood office, officer program spend that quality time over a period of, 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 a period of time in order to develop that relationship so we can truly get the benefit of it, both from the, from the, from the, the community's perspective and from policing perspective. And so what is the right uh, number, if you like? And it really, truly, it varies. It, it varies because we have to also be considerate that the officer who is assigned to a program may also have uh, uh, policing careers and aspirations that we can't minimize. And so the, the intent is to get that initial commitment, a number, a year, a number of years that we think is tangible enough to develop that relationship and develop that trust and develop that bond. And then we'll explore uh, past that as to how long a duration that individual ought to be. But I can't minimize the importance and the recognition that it takes time to develop trust. It takes time to develop relationships. And in this neighborhood officer program, it's all about relationships. I just want to uh, <clears throat> express again, uh, we mentioned in the previous uh, episodes how uh, grateful we are and privileged to have uh, support from the command. Uh, we, we stated before, and, and I have to mention again, uh, without uh, uh, understanding and support from uh, upper command, uh, this program would not be possible. And having the stability that we had in the last uh, four years uh, since we've been uh, involved in this program, and, and now you stating um, that this program is here to stay and uh, Toronto Police Services uh, is looking into um, uh, incorporating this as a, as a uh, future of policing. Uh, I think that's extremely reassuring for all uh, the audience and, and the people who are following us and, and also that uh, had, were a little bit skeptical in the beginning of the program 
because as uh, Farza was saying before, we had tentatives in, in the past when we had uh, officers uh, deployed to uh, certain neighborhoods, but uh, was uh, very short-lived and uh, uh, hence, uh, you know, the people's trust was always um, somehow uh, yeah, disappointed and uh, that's why it was a little bit difficult in the beginning, but now hearing that, uh, you know, uh, your reassurance as, uh, as upper command, uh, I think that's extremely valuable and we thank you Sepp, uh, very much for that. So essentially uh, developing strong, vibrant neighborhoods, it's a joint responsibility. It is. Uh, if anybody thinks that the police can do it themselves, they're wrong. Uh, and so in recognizing that, we recognize that we have to seek opportunities to develop relationships with the residents we serve. The neighborhood officer program affords us an opportunity to do exactly that. But there's a role, like I mentioned earlier, it's a joint responsibility. There is a role for residents to play even within the neighborhood officer program. You have to get to know your neighborhood officers. You have to reach out and take ownership of those neighborhood officers. You gotta hold them accountable. You gotta use them as a, a medium in order to get your voices heard at, at the level where we develop strategy. And so I encourage your listening audience to get to know your neighborhood officers by name. Get their contact information, leverage them, reach out to them if you have any concerns uh, and issues as it relates to the safety and the vibrancy of your neighborhoods. Make them be your, your, your voice in, in helping and assisting us in developing strategies to best sustain healthy, uh, vibrant neighborhoods. Thank you very much, Superintendent. Um, I think at this point we're gonna turn uh, this to the audience. Uh, we thank you for your time and we'd like to see what the audience would like to ask us and uh, maybe we can do some uh, Q&A questions here. So welcome back. Uh, we're uh, back with our uh, question and answer uh, portion of this program. Uh, we do have some questions from the audience uh, that we're going to hear and uh, try to answer that for you. You mentioned it takes time to build trust in the community, but how do you know if it is actually benefiting for the community? So first of all, the, 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 the true testament of our effectiveness is uh, the, our ability to develop safe communities. And so even if we were able to develop that relationship with our residents, if at the end of the day we are unable to attain a safe, a vibrant neighborhood, then our success will be measured by that. And so uh, the, that's one of the measure and uh, the metrics we'll use in order to make sure that we get it right. But also people's perceived perception of, of their own safety. Uh, if in fact people feel that they can freely use the space uh, uh, around them, their environment, that they're free to go to work, they're free to, to play in, the, in, the, in their own neighborhoods, that's a real testament of, of getting it done right. People's comfort level with the policing, their trust in policing, if that's improved, then we know we're in the right direction. And we're open enough to get responses from individuals as to whether or not we got it right. It's, it's, uh, if you develop uh, an effective neighborhood officer program, it should uh, create an environment where people feel free to have that dialogue and discussion with our neighborhoods. And if we're not getting it right, we expect that to be told so. A lot of people in the neighborhood may not know about the program. How do you get the word out on the neighborhood police program? Um, I will try to answer this question. Um, I think this is a work in progress. It's something that we're doing on a daily basis. and. Uh, I think uh, what we're doing today, uh, using um, our partnership with uh, Focus Media and Region Park and uh, trying to reach out to uh, all our uh, audience uh, through uh, internet and uh, local TV uh, station to introduce the program, to make people aware of uh, what we're doing. Uh, we're also uh, starting uh, uh, next week with, uh, with a coffee with uh, uh, cops. Uh, will be uh, on a weekly basis at a certain times. So we're going to have posters up when uh, people can come to a local coffee shop and, and uh, uh, talk to us. Uh, from being present to all the town hall meetings, uh, to all the programs that are taking place in, uh, in Region Park, um, and even our uh, daily patrols, uh, when, when residents uh, see us and they start to recognize uh, uh, us uh, in the neighborhood, I think um, our constant interaction, daily interaction with people, we're always uh, uh, advertising the program, we're always telling them who we are and, and what ways they have to reach out to us. 
Um, I think, as I said, uh, it's a work in progress. Up to this point, in four years, I think we've been uh, uh, fairly successful in, uh, in getting the word out uh, uh, pretty widely. But uh, again, uh, in, it takes time to get uh, to know everybody in the neighborhood. And also, um, just in relation to what Mercer was saying, that one of the simplest uh, ways that we um, try to get the word out there is, uh, is actually uh, walking the streets and, uh, and going from, from street to street, from home to home, from school to school, from community centers, um, and just being present and, uh, and showing our presence and being forward and, and communicative with people that has allowed us to uh, get the word out as well. And I think that's important to realize, you know, we have uh, a lot of ways that we can obviously uh, interact, but some of the simplest way is just to be present in the neighborhood. And uh, that's what we've been doing for the past four years. And the other thing, if I may, is, is we recognize the importance of technology and then how to leverage technology in getting that knowledge out. And so we embrace the various uh, social media platforms in order to get that message in. We are actively trying to create that critical mass of followers so that when we get messages out that it reads a wide audience and in turn it, uh, the social media affords an opportunity for us to also get responses. And so that's all, like the officer said earlier, a work in progress, but we're certainly heading in the right direction to achieve that. Well, we have reached our end of our program um, and also we have reached our uh, uh, episode uh, number five, which is our last one here for, for now. Uh, we'd just like to take this opportunity and uh, thank uh, all you guys, our, our audience, who have invited us to your home so you guys can get to know us a little better. Um, uh, this was truly uh, amazing for us um, and a great opportunity for us to uh, be able to explain to you what we do on a daily basis. And we're hoping that we can, um, um, with your permit permission and with your support, we would like to continue this um, as, uh, as we have already explained, you know, we have a great team of uh, uh, neighborhood policing program here in 51 Division in Regent Park and Moss Park and Jamestown. And we would like to uh, have the other officers as well have an opportunity to speak about uh, their uh, job uh, responsibilities and, and who they are. Uh, and hopefully we will get that uh, feedback from you guys. But for now, uh, this is it for us. And we would like to uh, especially thank uh, our boss, uh, Superintendent Tony Revere, for being here with us. And, uh, and uh, you know, with, without his support, you know, it would be uh, very difficult you know, having that upper command come in here and, and saying, you know, we're here for you. Um, that uh, means uh, the world to us. So we want to thank you uh, for being here. And, um, and thank you for allowing us uh, being in your home. I'll just turn this over to my partner who's been my partner for the last four years and, and, uh, and together we've grown in this uh, neighborhood and we've gotten to know you guys and, and uh, you've gotten to know us a little bit and uh, hopefully we can continue that. I just wanna thank Focus Media for uh, allowing us uh, and bringing this opportunity to us to, to get uh, uh, our uh, program exposed, uh, more exposure, more uh, interaction. Um, please don't be, uh, don't be shy to approach us if you see us through your neighborhood, uh, driving around or, or walking in your building or on the streets, you know, uh, reach out to, to the contact information you have at the bottom of your screen, uh, uh, give us an email or call us anytime you have uh, any problems, even if it's not a police uh, related matter, probably we're going to be able to uh, uh, put you in the right direction and uh, in, uh, in contact with the people that are appropriate in, in uh, supporting you and serving you. Um, thank you so much for, uh, for your support and um, we'll see a lot of uh, you in the next uh, couple of years, hopefully.